a compatriot of, of John's who was in Papua New Guinea, but unknown to him, I think, at that time, uh, but who is now a, a, a good friend of John's, um, but was having quite a different experience in another part of PNG at the time, was Charlie Lemain. And I'd just uh, like to invite Charlie up to the, the lecture here to uh, share some reflections on the book and on that particular time, Charlie. <laughs> Thanks, John, uh, for, for inviting me here. Um, I wasn't quite sure why I was invited, but we have talked quite a bit about Papua New Guinea on and off. Um, but first of all, the book Jack Muir and Papua New Guinea. Uh, if you know Jack Muir, and if you know anything of Papua New Guinea, that's a volatile mix. <laughs> um, both so passionate unpredictable, colourful and alluring. This book was never going to be boring. But first, what do you think you're doing? Get your hands off, my, off me, you bastard. Oh, I thought you might be interested. He exclaimed as if surprised and slipped back to his own bedroom, leaving me alone. So alone, so very alone. Angry and alert to my first miserable night in a foreign land. So began my own adventures in PNG. Unlike Jack, I did not travel there as a virgin, but sex with an expatriate lawyer was not what I was seeking. <laughs> I don't know that anyone does. Uh, robbed, and, robbed and nearly raped on my first day in Port Moresby. Uh, things improved for me after that. <laughs> I too travelled to the highlands. I lived in a remote village in the Chimbu province, overlooking the majestic Wagi Valley. I, embraced, I was embraced by the people I lived with, the village I lived with. They were gnarled, stunted and ferocious looking people. But they were warm, generous and playful. I lived amongst them experiencing their joys and sorrows, their colour and vibrance, their fighting and their peace. It was a different place and a different time. And this is the place that John takes us to, through Jack. Papua New Guinea in the late 60s, our nearest neighbour, our de facto colony, wild, mysterious, primitive, brutal. It acted as a magnet, luring generations of young Australians. Colonials, misfits, adventurers, rogues and saints. John, Jack and myself were among those. Jack Muir acts as our guide as he takes us on a roller coaster romp <coughs> through this time and place. An employee of the Colonial Bank of Australia or a bank johnny. What is it about Jack that attracts us? He speaks to us through his extremes. So manic and impulsive, yet sensitive and reflective. We're all here today in some way because of him. I met John through Jack. His first novel, Boy on the Wire. I too attended the same grammar school. Our experiences were contradictory but also universally the same. John talked then of the seed of Jack's next adventure, Papua New Guinea. We talked intensely, reminiscing as I, like John and Jack, had travelled there at an impressionable age of 19. Over the next few years, John and I caught up infrequently and only briefly. Then recently, at the bookmark quiz night, at the... At the uh, entertainment centre, he greeted me excitedly. Jack's next journey was complete. And here it is, to the Highlands. It's a while since I've been to a book launch. I thought I'd need to show you, but there it is anyway. <laughs> I was handed his only copy, given two days. I devoured it hungrily, and Jack's escapades awakened my own PNG adventures. 
Be warned, this book is not for the faint-hearted. It is brutal and savage, but fascinating and funny. It reflects the contradictions of the primitive tribal place in which it's set, Papua New Guinea. And all along, Jack Muir, our Bank Johnny tour guide, never deserts us. His humanity, his humanity re resonates with us. Through his anger, angst and passion, his love and his lust, his despair and hope, his courage and above all his humour. And always there is the sex and the drinking. And the drinking and the sex and the sex and the drinking. <laughs> Jack leaves us laughing and frustrated as we follow his exploits, but graciously allows us the space to reflect on our own actions. This you must discover for yourself. This is a colourful, passionate roller coaster of a novel, and I commend it to you. I encourage you to buy at least one copy, get John to sign it, take it home, and slip back to a former time and place and enjoy the ride. Uh, congratulations to John for pulling this together um, and I'll be waiting patiently for the next instalment of Jack's sagas. Thank you.